next person up is Tim Reardon. I think we all know him as the manager of cities and or the guy who appeared on the, uh, the, the John Stewart show, The Daily Show, to kind of wrestle with John over the question of uh, our welcome city Dayton initiative for immigrants. But you may not know him as a lover of art and a collector of art. So his 20 by 20 is all about collecting. I like all kinds of art. This is a trash can. I call it functional art. My wife and I are obsessed. We need a trash can in every room. And if you're going to have a trash can in every room, it ought to be something that gives you pleasure in putting the trash into it. Now, you'll also see the primary colors. That'll be a theme as I talk about this. I love things in primary colors. Uh, so I gotta quickly go another. I'm obsessed with telling Tom with what time is it, what time is it. So again, if you're gonna look at a clock, you wanna have a nice clock to look at. Great lines in this clock, and don't you just love the red second hand? I can just sit and watch that second hand go around. <laughs> now I also like to chew toothpicks. And so you need something to do. I went to Santiago, Chile to visit my son. And I also, we live in apartments, and so we don't have much room. So if you're gonna get a memento, you have to get something small. <coughs> so this is from Santiago. It's a toothpick holder, I don't know what it was. We got it on the street for $2 when I was there with my son. And it works very nicely, it's functional art. So then, I was supposed to be a girl. I also like folk art. <laughs> and this is Tootsie. Mrs. Gieselbrecht made Tootsie for my mother because I was going to be a girl. Oh, Christ, too far. Uh, well, talking about the art, my mother was a great artist. This was my mother's. She made it. It was always over my brother's bed. When I was 50 years old, I found out that in the back of it, it says, I made this in 1947 while little Timmy watched. So I end up owning that. Uh, I own it now. I was in Louisville at a store. This is, again, more full cart. And love this piece, love the primary colors, very simple. And the artist, though, is a guy who, he only paints, he was painted on a piece of wood, he only paints art uh, when he needs the money. So he comes and he sells it at a full card store in Louisville, and I was lucky to get the piece. Now then, I'm also interested, I spent a lot of time in Russia, and this is a crummy picture, but I always wanted to get rich buying hand-carved Russian chess sets. And I never could find anybody did it. I found this art, this is a spectacular piece of art again. But this was another guy, I bought it for $70. That meant he had enough money to live for two months in Russia. This piece is one of the crummiest pieces in my collection, but it's very memorable. Again, I was trying to make money in Russia. And I was trying to get to a database, you know, so I could sell databases about Russian companies. And I couldn't get into this company. This was a gift they gave when I got there. They were all the KGB. That's why I keep that piece. When I was 18 years old, I went and took a job in Glacier Park in Montana, and I grew to love cowboys, and I grew to love the West. This painting, you know, again, it shows primary colors, sort of the Impressionism, and my love of the West. You've probably seen this in the Oval Office. It's the Bronco Buster by Frederick Remington. If you bought it in one of his originals, it would be worth probably a half a million dollars. This is not an original. It's still a wonderful piece just to enjoy the cowboy, the myth of the cowboy, and the excitement of the cowboy. But the next picture is more what the cowboy life, I think, was really like. It was a boring, quiet life, but I thought this piece still captured the romance of the West and the cowboy. I bought this piece without telling my wife, and I was scared that it was in Minneapolis, and I came home to date, and I was just afraid what she would say, because I did it, and she liked it. Now this is what I call family art. This probably at a garage sale would get you at least 50 cents. My uncle, it's an, it's an ashtray. Now the thing about this ashtray, this reminds me of Grandma Schmidt. But the funny thing was, Grandma Schmidt's ashtrays were always at the highest level. You smoke an ashtray and you put it out up there. Well, uh, that's because I only saw that ashtray when I was four years old. This is another piece. Grandma Greshel ran a, a bar and saloon, and this was just, again, family art. I thought it was a really pretty piece. I kept it. It's from the 1850s. 
I bought this at the High Point Gallery. I, I just love primary colors, so it had the greens and the reds, and I don't know, strawberries seem pretty good. And so when you come into my apartment, this is the first thing you see. I didn't have much to say about this one. <laughs> this is done by an investment banker of New York, and I got it cheap. It's now worth about 10 times what I paid for it. She's a hot artist. And I tell that to my wife, and she says, big deal, you'll never sell it. It's, it scares the, I like, you know, sort of contemporary stuff. It scares the grandkids, so I'm sure my children will just throw it out. <laughs> Brother Joe Barish from Bergamo is one of, who I think is one of the best and prolific artists in Dayton. I love this piece. It's got the primary colors. It's an urban scene. I love urban scenes. He made it out of pallets, old discarded pallets, so it's recycling things into good art. This is why I still work. This is the only piece of art that my wife won't let into the house. So I have to have an office where I can use this because I don't want this piece. That's why I'm not retiring, I'm just leaving. This is Mr. Juicy Juice. Mr. Juicy Juice, the artist told me, would create world peace. And that's what it was for, it's to create world peace. And Mr. Juicy Juice and the Pope are the ones that brought together this whole Cuba thing. <laughs> you know, hey, I, mean, it is, it was, I like power. I think a rhinoceros really emotes power, but they have an ugly color. So I asked the artist, could you make me one in a different color? And I said, orange. And he said, no. I said, orange. He said, no. I said, orange. He said, no. I said, look, I'll pay for it in advance. I have two, kid, two kids that have orange hair. I know some use it. This, you might think, is a Jackson Pollock which, uh, painting, which would be worth about $100,000. It's actually an artistic rendition of what somebody's brain looks like after they've been city manager for five years. 